All right, welcome back once again. As a quick review from the first video in this lesson, you learned how to create a structure, in this case a student type. In the second video, you learned how you could pass that structure as an input. All right, pass it as an input to a function, and by passing it as an input, you could access the different members, the different fields of the structure. So name, ID, GPA. In the third part of the lesson, we saw how you could pass a pointer to the structure. And by point, passing a, a pointer to it, we saw how you could actually change the values. Uh, and we had this init student where we actually changed the values. In this video, I want to show how you can have an array of structures. And what I'll do for this, let's do another type def, another structure. So let's say type def. Um, again, it's going to be a struct. Begin and end. And we're going to call this, how about a color underscore t. So I'm going to declare a structure type that's going to be color t. And let's say we're going to have a character pointer that will be the name of the structure. Okay, so we have a character pointer be the name of the structure. Oh, just for demonstration purposes, let's have a uh, integer value, which will be the uh, hex. Uh, well, we'll just call it value. So a name and a value. How's that? And what I want to do is go ahead and initialize some of these values. So what I'll do is say, let's have a color type. That's going to be colors. So I'm going to have a variable called colors. That's going to be an array. So notice the open and close curly braces are open and close square brackets equals open and close curly braces. And the idea here is I want to initialize these colors but I want to initialize them as this structure. Now, maybe before we do this, remember, in an earlier lesson, we did something like this. We could say integer uh, nums is an array equal to, and we do the open and close curly brace. We could say, well, go ahead and initialize these numbers to 10, 20, and 30. And so that was the way of initializing an array. Well, here we're going to initialize the array, but we want to do it of this structure. Well, that means the first entry, let's say, is going to be red. And the let's represent this in hex. So 0x for hex. I'll say ff 0, 0. Zero, 0. So that's going to be the value. Now, and then I'll, I'll put a comma here. And then let's do the next structure. We'll say red, green. And it's going to have a hex value of 0, 0, FF, 0, 0. And actually that should be not a a string but the actual value and then the last one we'll put here we'll say red green blue and for that we'll say 0x 0 0000 0, 0, 0, ff now without going into too much detail basically these are hex representations of values that um, basically 
if if you think of how video works on a monitor think of this as the red uh, gun if you want to call it that the red output uh, they used to literally with a video screen they would they would call it the the uh, red green and blue you had three separate guns basically shooting video out in those colors here with LCD panels it's a little different now but in any case all the all the red, all the green, and all the blue. Alright, now if I just click on run at this point, oops, looks like I've got an error here. That should be a, there we go, the curly brace. So now I don't have any errors. And this is a good example of taking a structure and going ahead and initializing it. Okay, so this was our structure and I wanted to show an array. In fact, let's put, let's do this at the very beginning since it, we'll keep it all up here together. Suppose you're, what you want to do is go through this whole array, no matter how many entries there are, go through this whole array and print out both the, uh, the value of the color as well as the value. Well, we could do this. We could say for integer i equals zero, because we know this first index will be zero. i less than, well, we know this index will be zero, one, two. But when it gets to be 3, we don't want to do anymore. So we could say less than 3. But suppose we go in and we add other colors. We do like black or white or any other color. Then this would change. We'd have to change this number. So remember our trick. We saw this in an earlier video. You could say, show me the size of colors. So when you say, show me the size of colors, it adds up all the bytes that will take up this. And then you say, I want to divide it by the size of a colors of zero. So here we're saying, show us the, I just want to take a single entry. So basically we say, take all the entries, divide them by a single entry and of course that'll tell you how many we've got so do it less than that whatever that may be and then I plus plus now when you think about it as we're going through here each time through we want to say printf we'll do a uh, percent s for the color so percent s for the color and percent 0x and actually we'll put 0x percent 0x backslash in then we'll say okay show us colors of i dot name and colors of i dot value. For some reason my web page is running really slow right now. You can see there's a big delay from the time I type to the time it responds anyway. Um, so we've got a printf. Okay, so we're going through and actually accessing each element since we've got an array of structures we're accessing them by name I'll click on run and look at this we got reds greens blues right I should got an additional s there so click on this red green and blue right, we've got the output that we were expecting there we could say give us an output 
of 0, 8. That'll make sure we're using 8 spaces. So notice now we're using, we're making sure we have 8 digits for each one there. So that's one way we could do it. And the last one I'll do here, and then we'll be done, uh, we'll say another way you could do this is say, um, let's have a color T pointer. I'll just say P. Maybe we'll say PC, pointer to color. So PC. And let's set that equal to colors of zero. In other words, we've set our pointer to be this colors of zero. And notice it's giving us an error. It says initializing color underscore t with an expression of incompatible type and this is one of those it tells you take the address so you go oh okay so I want to take the address so we're saying take the address of where this is at and that's going to be the pointer and if we do that copy this code paste it right here but how I'm going to do this differently as we're going through here I'm going to say PC pointing to the name and PC pointing to the value and also, watch this. This is something a lot of people don't don't get. So listen closely. I'm gonna say PC plus plus. What this does, I'm incrementing the pointer because right here we're saying right is pointing to it to this entry here. Well, each time through the loop, I'm incrementing this pointer. And it turns out by incrementing this pointer, it'll first point here. Then when you increment it, it'll point here. And then when you increment it again, it'll point here. So you can see once again, there's a relationship between arrays and pointers. And in fact, probably this makes it even clearer that there's a relationship between arrays and pointers. And in fact, when we run this, we get the same output whether we do it this way, red, green, blue, or whether we do it this way, red, green, blue. We get the same output. Okay, so you've seen structures, you've seen pointers to structures, you've seen array of structures. As always, make sure your code is doing the same as here, and more importantly, make sure you understand all the concepts. I'm Norman McIntyre. Thanks as always for watching.